Uh, g'day guys, um, we're making this video today to um, help out with some inquiries that I've had on the alternator modifications, how it was rewound, well it wasn't really rewound, it's just modified um, in as much as the voltage regulator, the internal voltage regulator has been uh, disabled or deactivated and um, I've uh, directly connected to the uh, field brushes so I can control that. Um, the first, the first thing you really want to do is download um, this manual. You can search on Google here. Search for something like a alternator handbook, and you'll see the first link right here. The uh, 12 volt doctor's handbook. It's just excellent for um, anything to do with alternators. You really need to download that to get a, a fair idea first. You get your alternator, and uh, you're going to have to pull this rear rear housing off off the alternator. Um, so what you've normally got on pretty much every alternator is these four through bolts that are around the uh, join the two housings together and through the stator there. You have to remove those four bolts, and internally here you can see the uh, diode block, and on the other side is a regulator. These are attached with uh, nuts, so you have to remove about five nuts. This one's got a main terminal here, as as like a, a lug. It has to come off as well. Once we get those uh, off, then. Oh, up there, there. Okay, this is once the uh, main housing's been removed, and you can see the um, main terminal here. That's been, uh, that's one of the nuts. Another one here, 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 and two up here on the, uh, that's the actual regu voltage regulator there. That, a nut on there and there. Here's the rear bearing. So we can, uh, once all that's undone, we can pretty much pull the rear housing. Um, this this rear housing here will pull straight out off the back uh, with a bit of persuasion, maybe, uh, but it will come off. Then what we're left with on the uh, once the housing's off is um, you'll be looking at something just like this, exactly like this. And the feel, the uh, output windings around under here and they come up through this plate and they're soldered, the three phases, soldered onto these terminals which are quite robust and um, they're soldered on and they're also kind of crimped uh, which is a pain it's very difficult to get them off um, you're basically trying to unsolder you need a very uh, hot soldering iron probably the hotter the better more than a hundred watt soldering iron probably 150 watt soldering iron to start with there you get that solder solder melted try and open up the um, the crimped uh, terminal on there and uh, with a fair bit of um, action you'll end up, you'll be able to get those main windings where they come up unsoldered and then this whole plate will come straight out because that's all that's these three solder connections are all that's holding this assembly onto the um, state of the output stator Here we have the um, control section of the alternator pulled off from the from the uh, stator windings, the output windings. You can see the brushes here. These ones are fairly worn, but they're still okay. This was the um, terminal coming in from the from the uh, car wiring. So we've got an idiot light, the L terminal for lamp, 
and a um, voltage sense wire S which goes straight to the um, battery for battery sensing. We're not going to be using either of those. Um, what what we have, the main output terminal on this alternator, the main uh, output comes, there was a rivet, see this rivet here? There's, there's normally two rivets, one there and one there, that hold this um, regulator to this uh, diode pack. And um, you need to find using your um, meter, uh, ohm meter, connect to one of the brushes, and I think it's the inner brush down the bottom here um, on this particular alternator connected straight to the um, output 12 volts. So what you end up with is your um, 12 volts from the alternator coming through through that riveted connection through the bottom uh, brush through the, through the um, field windings the, the rotating field windings and slip rings back out through this uh, other block to, um, other brush through the regulator and the regulator um, controls the field current um, to ground. One of these will be the ground. Depending on the voltage sense through the sense wire. Now you're going to have to flip her over and drill one at this pop rivet off. Once you determine which one of these has the um, the positive feed into the regulator, you've got to disable that. That disables the regulation of the of the alternator. Uh, in this picture here, you can see my uh, what modified uh, modification of wires coming in and soldered directly to these are the back of the brush blocks here, straight through to the brushes. I've soldered two wires, uh, one on one for each brush. And they just come up and find a convenient um, hole through the back of the alternator for these wires to come out. So that's what that's that's your next part of the modification is to solder the two wires straight onto the onto the uh, each brush, one wire on each brush. Back to the first part of the modification. Um, right here we are here. And I, I had already determined that that is the pop rivet that had to be um, drilled out and uh, insulated. So we drill drill the top off that pop rivet and tap out the um, the rivet tail. And uh, actually. There, there is the um, the old uh, rivet tail after she's been drilled out from here. You can see that hole right there. That had a pop rivet the same as uh, that. So that one's been drilled out. There she is up there. And now this is another view. There's the uh, drilled out pop rivet right there which um, supplied that mo main terminal positive there um, through into the regulator. What I'm going to do is in insulate that. I want to keep the mechanical um, stability. It holds, it sort of holds the um, parts together so you need to maintain the mechanical stability there. I've used a couple of um, these are like for a power transistor, insulating the um, power transistor tab, I think a TO3 type transistor and a fibre washer, nut uh, nut and bolt and um, insulated fibre washer between the two metal surfaces insulating uh, boss in each, each end, each side of it, nut and bolt straight through then that's done then we go back and um, fit fit your um, diode uh, block regulator assembly back on and recrimp and resolder 
the recrimp and resold of the um, main output windings on, onto their uh, tabs there. Find a convenient outlet for your wires, put a bit of uh, protection on them if you feel like it and uh, that's it, your job's done. And what you've got now is an alternator with no control, basically. Um, I don't think you really want to um, run this alternator with it not connected to anything. Ideally, alternators should always be connected to a battery. Um, this alternator is specifically now designed to be permanently connected to the HHO cell, which um, is okay. And now you need to control that. So I was talking about a pulse width uh, modulator um, to control your vehicle's 12 volt DC supply from a, the existing alternator, the normal alternator and battery system of the car. Control it using pulse width modulation, um, controlling directly the um, field to control your output. Now the types, uh, I, I like this um, J car shop because it's handy, it's a uh, local sort of shop and the pulse width modulator I've chosen to use is uh, this guy right here um, and th these are kits, uh, that, that's just great that one uh, you know there's dozens of these pulse width modulators, any of them DC speed motor speed control as they're called or um, there's uh, really dozens of them you can pick them up at any sort of electronic shop as a kit form or pre-built um, lots of ways to go with them but that's the one I've used and uh, they're called jcar electronics jcar.com.au and uh, well, that's about that. There's your uh, modified alternator. Uh, you're going to need to monitor the voltage and uh, current and manually control your pulse width modulator to limit that or control it. On mine, uh, the thing with your alternator, the output, if you set a uh, particular field current, uh, as the motor uh, RPM increases, the output's going to increase. So I make I wouldn't use this, uh, say, to try and make a 24 volt alternator for for the vehicle systems, because your voltage is going to be all over the place uh, unless you can control it continually with the pulse width modulator control. Um, in this case, I'm going to be setting up the um, pulse width modulator current for field current for, for a maximum um, current through the cell that I want at, at a high vehicle RPM and um, as, as the vehicle RPM reduces the um, output will decrease which I don't really care about you want it kind of works in, in the favor of the system where at, at low RPM you don't need that much HHO I'm guessing and uh, of course when you're loaded the engine up you um, really want more so it suits me just fine okay thanks for watching